Right. So this episode was it really entirely on the back of what's her name again? Kristen yeah. Milioti. She Brian is won an Emmy in one episode. <laughs> Put her at the top of the list. <laughs> Alongside with obviously Penguin and his performance in, you know, but Brian. One and two. Imagine. Colin Farrell and she win pe- uh, Emmys. Sure. For the performance, that would be dope. But Brian, yeah, she carried the show on her back. We really got to... The emotions that you are on while watching this in terms of the feelings you have towards her character, because initially it was like, this girl is crazy. And then you realize, oh, snap. I realize why. Yeah. And that's usually the time that people don't usually take to understand, right? The why. They just say, oh, snap. Crazy. But the transformations that she was able to uh portray brian in terms of you know she's still family but she has her loyalty to her her father and her feelings for her father there's that sense of you know she he's not only the boss he's my father right and her sort of you know sensible emotions in terms of just being a grown-up just living a normal life right until the betrayals brian until the until the realizations, Brian, and the things that she has to go through, and now we understand who she is somewhat. Your thoughts, Brian, on that episode of The Penguin? I thought this episode was incredible. Uh, it was disturbing. I thought it was well-conceived. I thought it was the perfect example of how you use the television medium to provide the kind of backstory that a movie often doesn't let you. And it, this show is doing a masterful job of making its diabolical leads seem like sympathetic figures. And in this episode, right, she goes from being like just a sort of the sadistic loon to like, oh, she's actually as much the victim as she is the perpetrator, such that when she exacts her revenge, you're rooting for it. You're like, I get it. I get why you got to that place with these people because of how they've done you over the past 10 years. But I did want to lead with Arkham. To me, this was the most fully realized version of Arkham that you could possibly have. Yeah. If you were going to do Arkham for real, it is not goofy. It is not happy. It is not silly. It is a place for the deranged and the psychotic. And the staff are as twisted as the inmates. Um, And so it was outright disturbing to see her be tortured kind of in the way she was. But it, I think it was effective in putting you inside that world. Um, and leading to this place of when she does finally snap and kind of turn and you start to see her lose her grasp on. And she did a great job, I thought, of holding out. I thought Miliati did a great job of keeping her innocence and keeping her humanity early in her stint. And then finally she kind of is broken by the the institution. Yeah. Um, so I loved that manifestation of that part of the Batman world that everyone knows but I feel like most shows and movies have kind of shied away from the guts of it. They use it as a set. They use it as like a character entry, but they are not willing to show you Arkham. Like even Chris Nolan, which made Arkham seem very dark and, you know, gray and hidden. He didn't really show you the inner workings of the asylum itself. And this show did. And I really appreciate that. We can sort of say that the possibility of an Arkham series. And I know there is perhaps on the discussion that this will probably get done because of that world being so intriguing, Brian, this world being so intriguing that 
Matt Reeves has created. And I'll be there to watch it because you can do some really interesting things there, Brian. From the perspective of the people that work there, you can, this is, Brian, there's gold there. Yeah, that one doctor in particular, people are suspecting, uh, Dr. Rush, they're kind of suspecting that's a code name for, I think Hugo Strange is the betting money, but um, that he's something else. And there were some Batman Easter eggs, right? Magpie is a, is a sort of a lower level Batman villain, I think. Um, I think she shared a cell with Poison Ivy at one point. So there's some there's some Easter eggs in, in this episode along those lines as well. I, I, I definitely think I walked out of this episode. And by the way, I thought the revenge at the end was exquisitely executed. Like the, the sequencing, because you knew when she popped up dressed to the nines at the dinner, you're like, these guys are all screwed. How How is this going to happen? And I kept waiting for yeah, the blood yeah, bath, yeah. the actual yeah, blood yeah, bath. Yeah, there yeah, was yeah, none, because yeah. she was two steps ahead of killing all these guys. So, spoiler alert. It would be dope if she was Poison Ivy on the low, but... Well, it made me, it made me, this episode made me a little sad in the sense that it made me more convinced she's not making it out of this season, but I really want her in the Batman part two. I really want her in the world as this like unpredictable force that can kind of come and go in, in sort of the criminal underworld. I, I wish there was a way for that to, to happen, but I don't, it just, the way they're setting this character up, it just seems impossible yeah. for both Oz and her yeah, to coexist. emerge from this season. Yeah, let us know in the comment section below. I had one what? note. Okay. Go ahead. One note for this, the episode. I okay. wanted one scene in the cafeteria mm -hmm. where a couple of the inmates were talking about how they got there. That's what I wanted. Because we know how they got there. And we know who put them there. And I just wanted one little, like, they don't say by name. There's the these fire. crazy people talking and bitching about this creature of the That's, night brian what have i been saying to you brian what have i been saying to you i've been saying that his aura at least needs to be there at least a mention that man is a problem for these people yo and no mention of him yeah, I wanted that one. It, it wasn't even, it didn't even have to be involving her. It could have been like you just overhear other inmates basically being like, this dude's crazier than us and he's on the outside and we're on the inside. Like just something like lamenting but nothing. his existence and they didn't do it. And I was like, it was there. It was there. For but like that's how good the show was. Yeah, oh, totally. The show was still a 10 out of 10, but it was like, there was that moment Things where I was like, it, it could have done it. And it would have been like, aha, he's out there. And he's why you're all in here. But that's what I've been saying, you know, th there's no mention of it, but yet things are happening and it's fine. The, the performances are great and all, everything is fantastic. But that little piece, like if you had to, if you told me five out of five, I wouldn't give it a five out of five. I would give it a four and a half. And just, okay. and it's just because of that. Is that? I also will rewind a little bit because we didn't talk in full about episode three, the Vic episode, which I thought was also outstanding. Yeah. Um, one of my favorite sequences, because it ties to Sophia, is Colin Farrell with tears in his eyes connecting with Sophia right before <laughs> they, get a, they get a gun put to their head. And then Vic comes in with the car, he gets in the <laughs> car, and he says, leave her. That is one of my favorite, like, two-minute swings. I was like, that's right. that penguin right there. <laughs> what we are looking forward to seeing and then trying to figure out is how this dude is going to talk his way out of this <laughs> If there, if there's talk to be had, Brian, because we already know that she's going to be at him and he's got to defend himself or have to go after her and, tr and try to do something because now he has both the, the families after him, Yep, which is a problem. <laughs> so how does he, I don't know, Brian. And, and we already seen from the, trailers for the the next set of episodes yep oz's personal life is going to like his real private personal life things that he considers um valuable in his life will be compromised and that's yep. going to be interesting to see where this goes uh brian so yeah let us know in the comments below what you guys think of uh 
the Penguin thus far in that episode. And the performances there, man. And the missing piece. It's going to be a missing piece. Be- there's beautiful pieces of art that miss that have that little piece that's missing. Does it make it valueless? No, but that piece, was, it, it could have made it, you know, everything. Let's move on, Brian, into the Marvel world. 